Okay, welcome. This is a tutorial on how to map RNA seq data to a um, genomic DNA sequence to um, correct or add a gene annotation, which is based upon RNA seq data. So, say you had um, extended a particular contig in wheat, which uh, you want to see if there was a gene on it, or um, you had a set of contigs in which you want to correct their gene annotations, what you can do is map the RNA-seq data and then manually correct the annotations to make sure they're correct. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this part of it in Galaxy, part in Genius. First thing we're going to do is set up a new history. So once you're logged into Galaxy, go to Create New. Then we're going to create a new history. So if you click on the name, you can change the name. So let's just call it uh, yeah, Training 101. Okay, now I've got this new history. I need to import uh, the contig or DNA sequence which I'm going to map against. So go to Git Data, Upload File. You need to select what format. So if you type faster, because um, most DNA sequences should be in the faster format. Go to Choose File select the file that you're going to import it's a sequence training dot faster is what I'm using press execute and then that file will begin to be uploaded and while that's been processed what we can do is if we go to the shared data store go to data libraries this is where we store um, a lot of public and Rothamsted data so if we go to plant, because I'm using a wheat um, contig, I want plant RNA-seq. So if we go into this subfolder, what will be in there will be um, different plant species folders, and then within those folders there will be additional subfolders, which will have RNA-seq data in, uh, genomic references, annotations. Um, and what you can do is you can import that data to your current history. So we're going to import two paired end data sets into our current history so that's going to be four files because for each paired end data set there's going to be a forward and a reverse file I'm going to use leaf tissue you can use all different tissues to map everything at once or you can focus on a particular tissue if you think it's been expressed in one particular tissue or if you're worried there might be different isoforms being expressed in different tissues you might want to keep it simple and just focus on one Sometimes it's easy just to map everything to get good coverage of your gene. Okay, so this is the wheat subfolder. So if I click on the little blue arrow, oh sorry, that's willow. In the little blue arrow there, there's wheat, and there's the project shares, reference, tutorials. So we're going to go to project shares where the wheat RNA seq is. We're going to go to Shule Chinese Spring Tissues going to use paired end data and what we're going to map is two leaf paired end sets of data so same file underscore one same file underscore two this is one data set again same name underscore one same name underscore two that's another data set so you select the boxes on the left and you go to the bottom it says import to current history press go this will then import the data into your current history. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to now map this RNA-seq data to our reference that we imported. We're going to use a mapper called Top Hat 2, which is specific for RNA-seq data, because it's needed to split the reads um, where there's exons and introns on the genomic DNA. So once that data has been imported, um, the browser will stop doing this round moving icon and it should appear at the top well the, the page should refresh and at the very top when it's finished we will have a four files have been imported to your current history so training 101 so to go back to our current history we click on analyze data and that takes us back we want to map this data so if we type into the search bar top hat 2 this is the tool we're going to use click on it then the options will come up for top hat 2 
select paired end data because we're using paired end. We're not going to use a built in reference, we're going to use something history. So select use genome from history, check that it's the file we want. Yep. We're going to use paired end data, but we're going to map two files two sets of files at once. So if you do this run tool in parallel um, icon for both, then what we can do is we can select all the data at once. So all the left sorry, all the forward reads, so they, they've got to be in sequential order that you do both in. So that one, hold down control, select the second forward read. For the reverse read, you select the first reverse read and select the second reverse read. They've got to be in the order that you selected these in. And then just press execute. Then those top hat jobs will be submitted to the cluster, which is our computing cluster, and then they'll be running. So the two files we're going to be interested in are the accepted hits files. These are the BAM files um, that we're going to use. Everything else we're not really interested in. So we're to make it easy, we're going to have to merge all these files. So rather than import them in individually and try and look if there's a gene on each individual data set, we're just going to combine all the RNA seq into one file to combine the mapped reads basically. So let's go to Picard Tools, Merge SAM Files. You can type that in the top bar if you can't find it. Merge SAM Files. And all we have to do is select both accepted hits files, the only two available. And what that will do is that will merge the data once these jobs are finished. And we can just download this one file. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, one I've done earlier. So if we go to Saved Histories, I've already done this and made sure it's finished and here we are. If I switch to this history we can download the file and then take it into Genius. So here is my merged file at the end. Because Top Hat filters out any unmapped reads uh, it's quite good that you only get those that are mapped. You don't end up with a massive file. So we've got quite a small file because it's only a very small contig. So if we click on the little down arrow, we're going to download this data set, our merged um, SAM file, into somewhere where I can find it. So training 101. So I've downloaded my data set. I'm now going to go into Genius and do some gene annotation. So Here's the file that I downloaded. Where is it? There it is. I'm just going to drag and drop it into Genius. And now asking for me for the reference that I used to um, map to, I'm going to select my sequence that I use. So import the sequence from a file. It's normally the best way. And the file that I used was sequencing sorry, sequence underscore training faster. So when you import a BAM file, you've got to import the reference file that you used as well. And then this will import the BAM file for you to visualize. So these are the mapped RNA-seq reads to our contig. So if we look at the coverage, it's not great. There is quite a bit of coverage here, but not much on the rest. So what I do normally is just map some more RNA-seq data because it might mean that this gene is much bigger than I, I perceive it to be. But we'll go with what we've got, and we'll tr just imagine that this is very good coverage, and we'll just pretend that we think this gene is just here, and there's nothing else to it. Okay, so what we can see is there's an intron here where reads have been split. So that's an intron, this is an exon, and this is another exon. And if we go here, we can see there's some SNPs. Half of these are C, half are T, which suggests that maybe there's two homologs because this is wheat. Okay, so what we're going to do is, you, if we imagine it's a forward direction gene, go to the start of where you think a gene will roughly start and look for an ATG. This is a bit too early on, the first one we see, because there's not enough coverage. Go to somewhere where there's a bit more coverage to so go along till we find another ATG. There's another one. 
it's starting to look a bit more like the start so let's start from there we just select the reference sequence all the way to the start of the intron so we'll just keep going along and there's our intron so when we no longer have any reads um, mapped to the reference we stop our selection, press add annotation check that it's CDS press OK so we've created an annotation for that one bit of sequence and let's have a look at it if you click on it it will give the automatic translation and you'll see there's there's no stop codons so that's looking like we've got the right frame it starts with a M and keeps going and there's no stars which is good okay and let's start our next exon there's a TGA at the very start but that's fine because it might be a codon that's split over the two exons so let's just press add annotation as you see when we look at the automatic annotation there's a star there's a stop codon at the start but if we select both of them hold down control and then hold down control and select away from everything that will just select the sequences underneath those annotations press add annotation untick this box because we want them to be combined because we want both exons in our gene and we'll get a new annotation which is combined the two exons so let's delete the old ones so we have this new annotation of a gene and we've got some stop codons now towards the end but because that codon was split over two exons it's not where it was originally which is good so we just need to take it now back to the first stop codon we get to so if you just keep watching the automatic translation we should find it there we go so there's our gene so we've added a gene annotation um, you can be guessing if it's forward or reverse if you don't know in advance and just see what um, stop codons are produced it normally doesn't take more than five minutes really okay so I now have a potential gene and what I'd normally do would map more RNA seq because there's not much coverage here we need to confirm that this gene doesn't have additional exons however I at least have a potential gene or part of a gene that I can further investigate by um, blasting or going on to interpro scan so that's how you correct or add an annotation to a contig of interest using RNA-seq. Thank you.